टुडे आवर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज नॉर्मलाइजेशन सो वी हैव मेनी नॉर्मलाइजेशन इन डेटाबेस मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम फर्स्ट नॉर्मल फॉर्म सेकेंड नॉर्मल फॉर्म थर्ड नॉर्मल फॉर्म देन वी हैव बी सी एन एफ एंड देन वी हैव फोर एन एफ एंड फाइव एन एफ सो दिस आर द अवेलेबल नॉर्मल फॉर्म फॉर डेटा बेस मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम सो नाउ वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न टू डे सो इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट कैंडिडेट की टूडे वी विल डिस्कस एप्लीकेशन ऑफ कैंडिडेट की so the greatest application of candidate key you will find in normalization in database management system so now first we have to discuss that why we need normalization so whatever link i have provided here this is the need of normalization that is why we need normalization technically but now i will give you a very simple reasoning by which you will understand why normalization is required so whenever a particular relation or table is given to you first you have to understand whether this table is okay or not so if this table is not okay means it is not normalized if i use a table without normalization then what will happen whatever sql query i will write it will not give us the fruitful outcome so before creating a particular table it is our objective to understand what should be the attributes we should keep together in one table so this is the first finding we have to understand so creating table in database management system is not so easy so before creating any table in database management system you have to find out which attributes should be kept together so for this table r say r is a particular table in which we have three attribute a b and c and say one functional dependency is given that is b arrow c means if i have the value of b then i can search for the value of c so this is the meaning of functional dependency so at this point of time the question is if i create this table like this then is it beneficial means is it fruitful for us is it normalized so for that purpose what we have to do we have to check whether this particular table belongs to any of the normal form or not if they belongs to any of the normal form then it is fine it is normalized but try to understand one point normal form means so whenever i am talking about third normal form then i am assuming that my table satisfies the criteria of first normal form and second normal form if i am talking about bcnf means my table is satisfying the criteria of 1 2 and 3 nf like this so basically whenever a question is asked to you whether this particular table is normalized or not the first thing that you have to check whether this table is in 1 nf or not then only you can check whether this table is in 2 nf or not and then you have to keep on checking and you have to finally conclude that your table falls under which normal form so this is the concept so here first we have to understand our table is in first normal form or not so we have to understand what is the definition of first normal form so according to the definition of first normal form it is very easy to understand if a particular attribute contains atomic value means that particular table or relation is in first normal form atomic value means we have under this attribute or this attribute or this attribute we will have single values so i'm giving you one example say we have a table say student in this student table we have student roll number student name and student phone number then what will happen say roll number 1 will have two phone number say name is a this person is having two phone number 
So we will write it like this. Then roll number two is having one phone number. So like this. So is this table in one normal form? Your answer is no because under this attribute you have two values altogether. So this is non-atomic value. Atomic value means in each and every tuple, in each and every row, under each and every column, we will have only single values. So in this case, this table is not in first normal form. So just make a note that it is not allowed in database management system that a particular attribute will have more than one value together as one unit. So each and every database table should have atomic value. So if this condition is satisfied, then we can say that our table is in one normal form or first normal form. It is very easy to understand. But the difficulty starts with second normal form. See, whenever we are talking about second normal form, then we have to understand some reasoning. So now what is this second normal form is all about? See, whenever the question is asked to you, that is whether this particular relation is in second normal form or not, first you check whether all the attribute is having atomic value or not. After checking that, this is the first condition, then you have to check the second condition. What is that? It is partial dependency exists in this table or not. This is the biggest criteria that you have to understand. So here my point is partial dependency is a very bad thing. So if partial dependency exists in a particular table, then that table is not in second normal form. So to make this table in second normal form, we have to remove partial dependency right so make a note over here if partial dependency exists for a particular table then this table is not in second normal form so we have to make it in second normal form by removing partial dependency so today we will learn two points first what is partial dependency and how to remove it and if we understand this two concept then we can easily understand that what is second normal form so now let's talk about partial dependency how to identify partial dependency because my table is in second normal form or not i can easily state if i know partial dependency exists or not now let's check so this table can be represented like this r is the table name and we have three attributes and here we have one functional dependency now how to find partial dependency so as i have stated that today we are talking about application of candidate key now you will understand how much important this concept of candidate key is and it is playing a major role in finding partial dependency so before learning partial dependency, the only thing that we have to find out is the candidate key. So this is the first rule. So please make a note over here. Today we are learning second normal form. For finding second normal form, we have to find partial dependency and for finding partial dependency, we have to know about candidate key. So now we know that how to find out candidate key. So whenever a particular relation is given, and functional dependency is also given then we will try to draw the age graph like right? from b to c so b to c then we will find which attribute is not having any incoming age so here a and b this two attribute is not having any incoming age so i will try to find out closure of this essential attributes so from a b i will get a v it's a law of reflexivity and then from b b is appearing in the left hand side of the functional dependency from b c is reachable so i will write a b c so from this a b all the attributes of the relation r is reachable so a b is definitely a candidate key 
so this is the first point so to find out partial dependency first find out candidate key now we have to move on to the second part that is partial dependency but again there is one problem to find out partial dependency we have to understand the concept of prime attribute and non prime attribute now this is the very confusing thing you have to understand in many places it is written something like that that by reading that thing you will understand that key is also known as prime attribute this is not the thing so you have to understand what do you mean by prime attribute see whenever you have identified the candidate key for a specific relation so in our case a b is the candidate key so you have identified so now what is the definition of a prime attribute so prime attribute is one which is a part of the candidate key or you can say subset of the candidate key is known as prime attribute now you may ask me one question if your candidate key is having only one attribute then what you can say so in that case it is prime attribute and also it is a candidate key so here try to understand in this case we have a as a prime attribute and b is also prime attribute because a and b both are the part of this candidate key so we have two prime attributes but what do you mean by non prime attribute so non prime attribute means once you have identified the prime attribute whatever attributes are left that is known as non prime attribute so here a and b are prime attributes so which attribute is left c so c is the non prime attribute right so i'm giving you a quick recap to find out partial dependency first find out the candidate key it is done in our case ab is a candidate key now the second step find out prime attribute and non prime attribute prime attribute means part of candidate key so a is one part of this candidate key and b is one part of this candidate key so a and b are prime attributes and whichever attributes are left in the table this is your non prime attribute so the second step is also done now what is the definition of the partial dependency the definition of the partial dependency is like this means if a prime attribute can find out any non prime attribute then definitely it is a partial dependency so in our case let's check how many prime attributes we have two a and b now we have to check whether this prime attribute is finding any non prime attribute or not so here in our table which is our non prime attribute c so here in the functional dependency it is clearly given that b can find out the non prime attribute c so in our case means whenever i am talking about this table r in this table r this prime attribute b can find out one non prime attribute c so that's why in this table r we have partial dependency so whenever partial dependency is identified it is a very very bad thing so i can clearly state that this table r is not in 2 nf or it is not in second normal form so now we have to convert it but what is the definition of the second normal form now try to understand so i have stated that second normal form comes after first normal form so to reach to the second normal form we have to check the condition for the first normal form so in this case the definition of the second normal form is a table is in 2 nf if and only if it is in 1 nf means all the attributes will have the atomic value and the second condition is no partial dependency exist for this table if this two condition holds true then we can say that our table is in 
check in normal form. But in our case, what happens? The table R satisfies the property of 1 and F. Means it is having the atomic values. But partial dependency exists. So in this case, it fails this the second condition of the second normal form. So it is not in second normal form. So now what we can do? So here I will give you one trick that is normalization means in one word if you ask me what is the definition of normalization then I can tell you that normalization means decomposition means whenever you find that your table is not in normal form so what you can do break into two or three pieces so decomposing this table into smaller parts is known as normalization. So in this case, what we will do, it is proven that our table R is not in normal form 2NF. So what I will do, I will decompose this table R into some part. Now there is another question, how to decompose? Means what is the rule of dividing this table? So it doesn't imply that if you have 2NF means we have two part. If we have 3NF then we have three part. Not like that. So how many part will be there? It depends on the situation. So now we are learning that whenever our table is proven to be not in 2NF then we have to decompose it. Now the question is how to decompose it. So the best way is to decompose this table. First find out which attributes are creating problem so in my table a b c which attributes are problem creator here b implies c is the problem creator means due to the presence of b implies c we have partial dependency so the rule number one is for decomposition identify which attributes are creating problem so keep them together and put them in one table. So B and C will be kept in one table. And also there is another rule. You should have to make one separate table for the candidate key. So it is proven that for our ABC relation means for our relation R with ABC attributes, the candidate key is your AB. So I have to keep A and B together. So this is how a particular table is decomposed. So what is the rule of decomposition when a table is not in 2NF? See, this rule cannot be applicable for 3NF decomposition. So the rule of 2NF decomposition is, first you have to create one separate table for the attributes which is creating the partial dependency. So in our case, B and C. And the second rule of decomposition is you have to create a separate table for the candidate key. So we have A, B as candidate key. So R1 is one table in which we have A and B attribute. R2 is another table in which we have B and C attribute. So basically this table will be divided into two parts, R1 and R2. In the first table we have A and B and in the second table we have B and C. And now try to put this value into this table. Now we will see what is the advantage we are getting. So here for A and B, I'm just copying this value here. For A1, for B2, for C3, for D3, for E3. Now for B and C, I'm copying these values together. So for 1, I'm getting X. For 2, I am getting Y and for 3, all the 3, I am getting Z. So I will write 3Z. So what is the advantage I am getting over here? After decomposing this table, what will happen? Whichever repetitive values are appearing, 3Z, 3Z and 3Z, they are not appearing here. So repetitive data entry is eliminated. If your table is decomposed. So this is how we could define the second normal form or 2NF. So now let's take one simple arbitrary example that is say I have one table AB 
CD with four attribute and we have some functional dependency like this. So now my question is whether this table is in 2NF or not. So the first thing that we have to do, we have to check whether this table is in 1NF or not. See here my point is since data entry is not given, so we will not be able to check there exists any atomic value or not. So here the trick is whenever some table is given, so by default consider it as it is by default it is in 1NF. So now go for the 2NF checking. So here first thing you have to find out the candidate key. So how to find out the candidate key? So we will draw the age graph or we can find out the trick that is which attributes are not appearing in the right hand side. So in the right hand side we do not have A and in the right hand side we do not have C. So this A and C are the essential attributes. So if I draw the age diagram also then we will find that A and C is not having any incoming age. So therefore A and C are essential attributes. So what we will do in the next step we will try to find out the closure of A and C. So from AC I will get AC and from A I am getting B and from C I am getting D. So basically AC is the candidate key because from this I am getting all the attributes of this relation. Fine up to this it is done. So finding candidate key is done which is AC for our table. Now the next step is we have to find out which one is our prime attribute and which one is our non-prime attribute. Now how to check? Here we have to check prime attribute means any part of the candidate key is considered as prime attribute. So AC is the candidate key. So A is one part, C is another part. So we have two prime attribute A and C. And which one is your non-prime attribute? Apart from this A and C, whichever attributes are left, those are known as non-prime attribute. So it is B and D. So after finding candidate key, after finding prime and non-prime attribute, then only we can go and check whether partial dependency exists or not. So definition of the partial dependency is if any prime attribute finds any non-prime attribute. So check A is one of the prime attribute. So A is finding any non-prime attribute or not. So according to the functional dependency, yes, A is finding one non-prime attribute that is B. So definitely partial dependency exists, but it may happen a particular table may have more than one partial dependency. So here check another one. So C is another prime attribute. Check C is finding any of the non-prime attribute or not. Yes, according to the functional dependency, C is also finding another non-prime attribute D. So here my point is try to understand a particular table may have more than one partial dependency. But here the definition of the 2NF is if one partial dependency exists, then only you can say that the table is not in 2NF, right? So one partial dependency is enough to say that your table is not in 2NF. So here my point is since partial dependencies are identified for this relation R so we can say that this relation R is not in 2NF it is concluded. So if a particular schema if it is not in normal form then what is our next step? Our next step is we have to decompose or we have to break the table. So R is the table with attribute ABCD. So we have to decompose this table. Then how many part we have? We don't know. So what do we have to do? We have to put the problem creators all together. So the first problem creator is this one. So A and B will be together. And the second problem creator is C and D. And also we have to create one division for keeping the candidate key. So our candidate key is AC. So there will be one table for AC. So R1, R2 and R3. 
are the three divisions means here I can conclude that after decomposing this relation R, R1, R2 and R3 they are in 2NF second normal form. So this is how we can decompose a particular table in second normal form.